This is the brief on News First Digital. A very good evening and welcome. This is the brief at seven on News First Digital, Sri Lanka's first ever online news bulletin. I'm Ramesh Shivagal Bandara, and I'm Sarah Lafonseca. On to our top story today. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce, uh, issuing a media release a short while ago, announced that the price of a 12.5 kilogram LP gas cylinder has been reduced by 138 rupees with immediate effect. Thereby, the gas cylinder, which was sold at a cost of 1,676 rupees, will now be sold at 1,538 rupees. The release noted that the Consumer Affairs Authority has sent the two determination letters today to the companies concerned. The decision to reduce the price of LP gas was taken following the Cost of Living Committee meeting held on the 26th of this month. Council representing former Sri Lankan ambassador to Russia Udayanka Viratunga announced in court today that his client hopes to return to the country to stand trial for the court case on the controversial MIG deal. Revelations made by the New York Times on Sri Lanka, the Hambantota port and China's involvement in our economy has made quite a stir in our political arena. Now, this New York Times report claims that uh, the Hambantota port project funded money to Mahindra Rajapaksa's 2015 presidential campaign. UPFA MP Namal Rajapaksa and UNP MP Harshan Rajakarna reacted to the claims made by the New York Times today. Oh yeah, New York Times what but they give you अतर दिन देश पाल ना कंबैडी में तो हम बंदरों वारा ऐसा में लंका वाला किरीम ने में उत्साह करन उड़ी का ना किरीम डॉलर मिलियन हताई दशम हाया गिनिच वैट पीली वाला कि इनमें सेकिया अपने मात्र हैं। We have some good news for commuters and motorists travelling on the Parliament Road. The feasibility study for the Colombo light rail project was handed in to the Minister of Megapolis and Western Development, partly Champika Ranwaka, today. Phase one of the ambitious Colombo light rail project, which aims to cut commute time to Colombo, will run from Malabay to Fort. The project is funded through a special concessionary loan through JICA, known as STEP. The feasibility study of Phase 1 was handed over to Minister Partly Champika Ranavaka by the head of JICA Sri Lanka, Fusato Tanaka. The official website of the Colombo Light Trail was also launched at the occasion today. 
According to the Ministry of Megapolis, the detailed plans for the project are to be completed by 2019. Work on the project is due to begin in 2020 and the project is expected to be vested in the public by 2024. I am thankful to the Japanese government and JICA for funding this uh, new project, new initiative. We have now concluded the most important part, the feasibility study, and uh, the EIA is ready by next month. And also, the, in parallel to this, the social impact assessment also being done. We will have uh, discussions with the Japanese government for this step loan. And in parallel to this, uh, our ministry has initiated another three corridors. They, they all will be kind of a public-private partnership type projects. The feasibility study is underway. The environmental impact uh, assessments all been underway. And we hope that uh, the first part of the next year, we will be able to commence work for these uh, three new corridors as well. The Court of Appeal issued an interim order preventing the removal of Beef Denishwaram from the position of Northern Province Minister of Transport, Fisheries and Rural Development. The order was issued when a petition filed by Denishwaran against the Chief Minister's decision was taken up before the Court of Appeal. The petition was taken up before a bench comprising of Justices Kumuduni Vikramasinghe and Janaka De Silva. The case is due to be taken up once again on the 9th of July. B. Denishwaran was removed from his ministerial position in the Northern Provincial Council on the 8th of August 2017 after corruption charges were levelled against him by a committee appointed by Chief Minister C. V. Vigneshwaran. The ministry occupied by Dineshwaran was split up into three and vested with other provincial councillors. The chief minister retained the subject of transport while the other subjects were divided among K. Sivanesan and Ananti Sasidharan. A quick announcement before we move into internationals. Join primetime news at 9 tonight on TV1 for a special expose on the government's plans to provide tabs or tablet PCs to students in schools in Sri Lanka. Let's focus our attention now to Indonesia where search teams using an underwater drone found human remains and motorcycles believed to be from an Indonesian ferry that sank last week in one of the world's deepest volcanic lakes. The KM Sina Bangun a 17-meter-long wooden ferry capsized during a storm and sank in Lake Toba, which is around 450 meters deep. Three passengers have been confirmed dead and nearly 200 are missing. Many passengers are believed to have been trapped inside the overloaded ferry, but the depths of the lake off the island of Sumatra and diving conditions have complicated efforts to recover their remains. 18 people, including the captain, survived the sinking of the ferry thought to have been carrying nearly five times the number of passengers it was designed for and dozens of motorcycles. Several people were fatally shot at a newspaper office in the Maryland capital of Annapolis today. Police has apprehended a suspect in connection to the incident. Live video images showed people leaving the building, walking through a parking lot with their hands in the air. The SpaceX rocket that flew just two months ago with a NASA satellite is back in action, launching with fresh station supplies. Five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff.
the Falcon 9 rocket powers the Dragon spacecraft toward the International Space Station, laden with new research for the multinational... The US Falcon rocket blasted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida. It's hauling nearly 6,000 pounds of cargo, including the first robot with artificial intelligence bound for space, genetically identical mice, and super caffeinated coffee for the crew of the International Space Station. The shipment packed into a Dragon capsule that's also recycled should reach the station by Monday. This marks SpaceX's fastest reflight of a booster. The same first stage booster launched the planet hunting test satellite in April. The capsule meanwhile flew in 2016. SpaceX won't retrieve the booster for another flight as the company is switching to a newer model. And that's a wrap of The Brief at 7 for News Plus Digital. I'm Ramesh Yogarbandana. And I'm Sarah LaFonseca. Good night.